Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club footer here at Second Swing Golf in Minnetonka. And today we've got a fun test, kind of take a look back at the history of tailor-made drivers, specifically the last 20 years. We're gonna test three models from the past 20 years of tailor-made driver technology, compare them with one another and see how things have advanced over two decades. So uh, we've got the tailor-made 360 tie from 2000. We've got a TaylorMade R11 from about 2011, and then we've got the TaylorMade Sim Max from 2020. So Thomas is going to hit some shots with all of them. We're going to talk about what you know, the feel, performance, uh, the looks as well. Uh, Thomas, I know you're very familiar with TaylorMade. They've been awesome with drivers for a while now, not just the last two decades, but prior. Um, what do you think we're going to find out? I know we've done a couple of these tests in the past, but I think we don't do it very often where we test this many generations, kind of in that range of technology. So what do you think we're going to see? Yeah, I mean, 20 years, that's pretty much 20 generation when we're talking yeah. about TaylorMade. TaylorMade mm -hmm. usually brings out a driver right. every single year. So there has been some significant changes in technology. Now, we have reached limits with regards to like CT testing and yep. how fast the golf ball springs off the club face. So we've reached those limits. But the, what we have noticed is the level of forgiveness has increased. So a lot of manufacturers these days are focusing on those mishits. Yep. So what I would expect today is the later generation, so like the Sim Max, probably a little bit more forgiving on those off-center hits versus Taylor Made 360 tie, a little bit smaller club head. I'm probably not going to hit it as well when I don't catch the middle of the club face. Right, exactly. And so I think this will be a good kind of test too for golfers who maybe um, or maybe think about trading in an, an old driver uh, at second swing, whether online or in our stores, just think, well, what, should I go with maybe an R11, which is you know, only 10 years old or so, or should I get something brand new, maybe something in between? So hopefully this can kind of provide golfers with that information. Um, one more thing as well, if you guys like the video, uh, feel free to subscribe to our channel and uh, give us a like as well. Uh, we like putting these fun tests together, comparing clubs and giving you the insight as well from Mr. Campbell. So. Um, Thomas, you want to get after it? Let's do it. Okay, Thomas, so I've got the $4.99 uh, TaylorMade 360 titanium driver from 2000, 20 years ago. Uh, I'm curious about this because, you know, I mean, TaylorMade's been awesome with drivers, right? And I don't think that's just been a, the last five years thing, last 10, I think it's been a long time now. So I'm curious to see how that has lived up to the test of time compared to, well, R11 and Sim Max. Yeah, it'll be fun to test the range from 2000, 2010, 2020, mm -hmm. and see if there is significant changes. I would anticipate that there is, but um, I guess we'll see what TrackMan says. All right, let's do it. Right off the bat, I'm going to need to uh, adjust that T height. This head's a little smaller. Oh, good point. Yeah, because you like to uh, hit up on up. it. Yeah. Yep. You like to have about half the ball above the club head? Yep. <laughs> Not quite the numbers I would typically see with the driver. No, and not your ball flight either. <laughs> <laughs> Hit that one really well though. That was really, really good. I don't know if I could hit that any better. We'll find out. Sounded good. That was, that was, that was mm. pretty good numbers across the board. You're carrying a 20 year old driver, 286 yards. <laughs> One thing I'm noticing right away is the height. Yeah, it's high and spinny to the, mm -hmm. to the right a little bit. I know you like to keep it around 100 feet in the air-ish. Oh boy. That's gonna be high. That was pretty much a sky ball. <laughs> it's straight, kind of. I mean. I am only human, you know. <laughs> nice. That one was good. It'd also be high, but. Well, I hit one out of five was pretty good. How yeah. does that feel? Because it definitely, it, it sounds much different than a you know, normal 
I guess I shouldn't say normal. I should say a modern driver sounds, but um, what's the feel like? Because it sounds kind of more of that like thump versus like a ting or a you know something like that. Um, with true honesty, it feels awful. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah the it just yeah something's not right. It, right. Yeah. Well, it, it's twenty years old. I mean, you're, you're old, used yeah. to playing drivers that are modern and brand new, so yeah, that's that's natural. Um, it feels nah. like mush off the club face. Like it's just soft mush. Yeah. It's not what just, you expect yeah, from a driver these expect, days. Yeah. There was um, one that obviously I skied, but right. I mean, yeah. you take that off. That wasn't bad. Not yeah. Too bad. And I, I noticed, you know, you like to you like to play a draw, and this is all out here, and most of it was to the right in terms of curvature. Yeah. Um, it was high spinny to the right. Yep, and yep. the spin numbers are much higher than normal. Yeah. But now we can get into something more modern. I think the R11 also was very popular back in its heyday. And so we'll see how the R11 tests against the 360 titanium. Sounds good. So Thomas, you got the R11. Um, you know, with a very popular driver uh, for amateurs, pros, you know, probably at this point eight years ago, seven years ago. Um, the white club head. It's kind of a, a trend there for a few years. It's not really a trend anymore, but mm -hmm. is that like distracting for you? Is that, I mean, that's obviously very different than drivers you're testing most of the time. So first start with the club head size. It looks close to that typical size with the drivers we're seeing yeah. these days. Uh, for me, I never played the white club head. I was never really kind of into the, yeah. the look of the, of the white, but they were very, very successful with a lot of their club heads with oh, the yeah. white crown and everything like that. Um, I never actually played one, but I know they perform really well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let's uh, let's see here because this is. I mean, this is kind of a few years after TaylorMade had adjustable drivers, or they yep. added adjustability into it. And so now we'll see how it performs here. Uh, both the, against both of these, I'm I'm very curious. All right. Yeah, that is loud. See, that thing is like, it's like piercing your ears loud, where it kind of, you can, you can almost feel the noise from this driver yeah. compared to <laughs> the previous one, which, I mean, now thing, I think nowadays driver is a little more muted, but I think this is where that time where you kind of, they just got into that 460cc and it was just a booming noise. But I gotta say that that drive in particular, the numbers are pretty good there, Tom. It's pretty good across the board, yeah. There's not really much I would complain about there. Yeah. Oh, we're now we're okay. So we get a little bit of a miss hit there, and we kind of see immediately these numbers drop off pretty significantly. Yeah. Where something modern, at least in testing we've done, a, a miss hit from you that I've seen on here would not have that much punishment to it. I don't ever see a, so my spin rate with a driver that's fit to me right. get over three thousand. Right. Even when you do miss it, maybe a little bit. Yeah. I mean, pretty well, sound numbers. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, you know, you had the one miss hit that really kind of showed the difference to me from the last, I guess, 10 years of technology. Yep. Where a miss hit nowadays, you're going to see maybe a jump of like, I don't know, four to 500 RPM. But this one jumped up over 1,000. Uh, but these other four shots up here, Thomas, are, are pretty good. They're pretty good. So that does say something about R11 and how it's lasted over the years. Yeah, they were really nice and straight. I'm looking at those four, circ four yellow circles out there that are pretty close yep. to the 280 carry mark. That's, that's pretty good. Rich, and I know 280 carry, I mean, I think you've been kind of closer to like 290 lately, um, but that's, you know, that's a pretty good number for, for R11 there. It's yeah. just that you kind of have to be hitting the center of the face to get that type of distance, but that's not bad. Well, let's see how the Sim Max performs. Hopefully, I can outperform these yeah. numbers. We'll, we'll see. Oh, yeah, it should. Hopefully. <laughs> I 
I saw an immediate ball speed jump there. Yeah, minus the spin rate a little high. I didn't. I feel like I didn't quite catch it there. It was what twenty seven hundred, but mm -hmm. because it was thirty five hundred, it's definitely right. a lot better. Yeah, that carry went up to basically two ninety. Yeah, a little over two ninety again. See that? And then we should. I mean, we should mention the the the, the Sim Max in terms of the club head type. It's not that low spin necessarily that you do like to play. So that might be part of the reason these spin numbers are a little higher than you generally get out of the driver. But um, you know, at you know, twenty, little under twenty five hundred is pretty darn solid, and you're still carrying the ball over two ninety. Yeah, I mean, pretty across the board, those numbers are about pretty pretty good. Yeah. I mean, we're not we're getting picky here, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, two ninety three carry with the driver, I'd sign me up all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that one felt like it left the face a little bit open. Yeah, so that is a good example there mm -hmm. of the forgiveness you get when you maybe catch it a little on the toll side. I felt like I missed that. Yeah. And it was the best numbers across the board because that spin rate number stayed down. Right. That is definitely the difference in driver technology over the past five years probably or, or even more recent is, yeah. you know, when you miss the center and especially if you miss it slightly on the toe, it's almost better uh, if you're trying chasing pure distance because your spin rate is going to actually decrease a little bit, which will help that thing fly. Mm -hmm. That happened here, which it's funny that you say we've had kind of one shot with each club now where you said, oh, I kind of missed that one. Yeah. And there's a, been a, a very distinct difference in how the ball performs based on a miss hit. Yeah, gear effect definitely helped me out on that last mm -hmm. shot there. That yeah. was pretty solid numbers. <laughs> you're like getting, I don't know close, getting, getting close to 300. It's, the carry it's number. close. Slightly high toe again. Yeah. <laughs> that is the one of the straightest ball flights ever. Um, we can look at this briefly, but uh, here we'll go this way. And I mean, clearly on the map, I mean, Every single one of those carried farther than any other driver. Um, and also the consistency of the distance was a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, spin rate was, you know, 2300 is right where you want to be versus, I mean, the R11 was still, it hung, up, it hung in there pretty it was tight. Close. Hung yep. in there pretty tight. I mean, you're losing a little bit of carry distance, but it's still, you're, you averaged over 300 total with the R11 still. But um, clearly, most recent driver is going to give you optimized performance compared to something older, which is obviously the, what we would expect. Yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at the numbers a little bit deeper. I want to kind of see if any, there's any trends that we notice, yeah. anything that stands out uh, when comparing, I guess, the 10-year gener generation models here, yeah. and just see if it, what really stands out. Mm -hmm. So Drew, let's take a look at the numbers and see if there's any trends. What really surprised me was the R11 club speed was a little bit faster than the Simax. Now, I do recall when the R11, the white club heads came out, I know Trackman was picking up the club speed just a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit on the faster, faster side. I know they solved those problems through their recalibration and everything like that, but it's just a little surprising still that that club speed just a little bit on the higher side. Mm -hmm. So that's why we don't have Smash Factor up there because it would have shown Smash Factor probably outperforming. So that's why it's more important to pay attention to ball speed. Ball yeah. speed is really king and more yeah. important anyway. So if we look at the ball speed numbers, you can see Sim Max 167.5 versus 163 with R11. Even though the club speed was just slightly lower. Um, so that's telling me that the newer generation was for sure generating more ball speed. Yeah. We look at the 360 tie, uh, the ball speed was 158.1. Now notice my club speed was about three, two and a half miles an hour less. I'm completely warmed up right now. I've been testing and I've, I yeah. swung out of my shoes with the 360 tie, <laughs> but I still couldn't even get that club speed there. And that's 
a lot of just the technology changes over time. You generate a little bit more aerodynamics mm -hmm. um, and then drivers. In yep. 20 years, I would expect a little bit more club speed. I'm sure there there's some well. optimized weighting going on too that didn't exist in you know a 2000 uh, driver versus something like even the R11 or the, the Sim Max. Some of the weighting may be helping you increase the speed coming down to the ball. Yeah, so we picked up about 10 miles an hour in 20 years of technology. So my hypothesis here will be going forward that every year of generation yeah. that you pick up about half a mile an hour more ball speed. That's just what okay. I would maybe, a lot of manufacturers, they, they, they come out with claims that the new and late, latest driver is gonna pick you up one, two mile an hour more ball speed every year. Over time, you're gonna see general trends. You're not gonna see maybe year to year, you're not gonna see just major differences, but over, the generations that we're seeing yeah. here, we saw 10 mile an hour in 20 right. years. So for sure, mm -hmm. newer clubs are gonna generate more ball speed than older golf clubs. Right, and yeah. I think, I mean, we can even see it in the, you know, the R11 to the Sim Max, that's four and a half miles an hour. And I, well, I, I, we're talking off the center of the face for most of these shots, but I think the, really, the real big difference from you know, year to year with drivers, especially something from early 2010s to now is going to be the forgiveness when contact is not made on the center, which is what we noticed a couple of times in this test, um, especially I think you had the one that maybe, I think that one farthest right up there, I believe is the one that you maybe left the face open, you said. Yeah. Uh, but the gear effect really helped it. And I think that was actually the farthest carry distance that you had. It was, I think it was like 297. So that was, yeah. that, was that, that surprised me for sure and the spin rate stayed around about 2000 mm -hmm. so that was definitely gear effect uh you mentioned level of forgiveness so spin rate with the 360 tie i was spinning at over 3000 also notice that the consistency number was also the yeah. highest so plus or minus 800 r11 25 44 pretty good consistency of plus or minus 506 the sim max 2384 with the lowest consistency number plus or minus 232 we talked about the forgiveness. A couple of them, I feel like I didn't catch the middle of the club face, but the spin consistency was, was yeah. huge. And that's just kind of the, the forgiveness that you get. You can see it over on the dispersion pattern here too. You can see how east to west, you can see the purple circle with the Stim Max, pretty similar numbers across the right. board. And you look at the 360 tie, north to south, we've got quite the range. I mean, yes, that was a little bit more of a sky ball. I feel like I had to tee that ball down every time with that <laughs> club there as well. But you're gonna see the consistency level from east to west to north to south. You can see those general trends there as well. So that's always exciting to look at. Yep. Uh, I picked up about 30 yards distance with, carry distance with the uh, Sim Max all with 360 tie on average and almost 50 yards total distance. Now, yes, there's that one miss it in there. Uh, if I just take that away really briefly and then look here, you can see that mm -hmm. distance wise is still picked up. And we were talking, that's you know, 20, 20 yards. yards. Yeah. 20 yards of carry. 20 yards of carry. Yeah, basically, well, over 20 yards yep. of total, so. So almost uh, a yard a year. Yeah, yeah, kinda. I guess yeah. that's the way, to, yeah. that's the formula, the very uh, makeshift formula that we're putting together <laughs> here, but. Putting together that formula there, but it's important we kept every shot up with every single club that we hit here, so I'm gonna put that back there and talk about those numbers. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Height, you did mention that the 360 tie was flying a little higher. Yeah. So 157 feet in the air versus the other two, more around the 120 mark. Um, dynamic loft was higher on average. Landing angle was steep, was higher, steeper. Interesting that I was able to generate the curve that I wanted with yeah. the Sim Max, the newer generation versus the 360 tie where it just stayed open yeah. to the right every single time there for me as well. So. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to take away from this, but uh, I think, you know, for the golfers that are maybe thinking about an upgrade, um, I guess it's going to really depend on what they have now. I mean, something older, you know, and, and for what it's worth, Second Swing will take anything in for a trade-in. Uh, so, um, you know, you can use the Second Swing Value Guide on secondswing.com, or you can just stop in your store and bring the clubs in, but uh, you can trade in your clubs and upgrade to something like that, uh, something like the Sim Max, or even upgrade to an R11 uh, if you think that's suitable based on this test. But uh, clearly, there's a difference, a significant one at that, over several years of technology. And 
I think we showed that here, and especially when we talk about the miss hits, where it's almost today, it, you know, yours almost was an advantage. Now that's not going to be the case every time, but you, uh, you know, you specifically gained a Gary distance with your miss hit today, uh, whereas we saw the miss hits with the R11 and the 360 tie were very punishing. Very punishing, yeah. Yeah, but Thomas, thanks for hitting the shots and uh, helping us test out 20 years of driver technology for TaylorMade. I learned a lot about this. This was interesting. Yeah, not a problem.